And then the second question would be sort of a, an issue of arbitrariness. If we have a, a law in the state of Nebraska that does not recognize same-sex marriage, and yet uh, Senator Christensen and Senator Koash are a couple, and uh, you give that, and then Senator Lathrop and Senator McGill are a couple, and you don't give the benefits, isn't that an arbitrary uh, choice that would be a, possibly a, a potential lawsuit? I mean, that, that creates a situation that was similar in the Windsor decision, actually, where, you know, had it been uh, an opposite sex couple that was married, you'd get a, a, a different tax result than if you had a same sex couple being married. And so uh, I could see a court applying similar reasoning as they did in Windsor uh, to find the result that you're indicating. DOMA undermines both the public and private significance of state-sanctioned same-sex marriages, for it tells those couples in all the world that their other, otherwise valid marriages are unworthy of federal recognition. The differentiation demeans the couple whose moral and sexual choices the Constitution protects and whose relationship the state has sought to dignify. You're, the court is speaking highly of the states who wanted to dignify and uphold this relationship. So by implication, there's a condemnation of those states which have laws that demean, stigmatize, and in other ways disparage the same-sex relationship. So somebody, if I practice law, I would bring the action. And here's how I might can do it. I, not because of religion, I am legally a minister because I was ordained by that outfit in Illinois which will do that because there were people who wanted me to perform weddings and I performed a number of weddings in Nebraska, not of same-sex couples, and they're valid. If a same-sex couple came to me to perform a wedding. I would perform it. Then if it were not recognized, we might go to court and use that as a way to bring in all these other arguments to show that in view of the Winston decision and the impact of it in terms of granting benefits under federal law, but which Nebraska in its narrow-minded way has contrived to withhold from people. The federal should trump the state. And these things should be struck down. There was a case from California, as you might remember, that would have dealt directly with whether or not the state could prohibit same-sex marriage, but the people who brought it didn't have standing to bring it. So we have to create standing in Nebraska. And if there are any forward-thinking lawyers who are not fearful and would like to collaborate with me, and we can find a same-sex couple who want to be married, we have to take this bull by the horns and not ne let Nebraska forever in every way, be backward. A place that is barren when it comes to morality, tolerance, respect for all people who are so narrow-minded that they say anybody who speaks for tolerance for others are somehow infringing on their right to discriminate and be hateful. I am willing to do it in the same way I offered a bill to legalize same-sex marriage, I brought a lawsuit to get the chaplain out of the legislature. A lot of things I do go beyond what my personal predilections are. But I'm looking at people who are disrespected, who are humiliated, not because of something they did, but because of what they are. They did not choose their genetic makeup. And when a society is going to attach disabilities to people because of what they are, they are excusing those people from the human race. They are making them non-persons 
on people or throw away things rather than human beings. <coughs> and I want the people in this state to know that they can be as hateful as they choose. They can say that people should not be allowed to rent property where they and their family can live because they are so racist and hateful. Who can say because they hate President Obama more than they love Christ that we are going to deny medical coverage to people who are working but cannot afford it. And that denial will be based on political motives. There's somebody who's going to stand against that and try to fight it and maybe I'll lose. But what about all these little songs they give to us in school? Live in fame or go down in flames. It's all right to do that if you're fighting for a flag that does not guarantee that it's the land of the free for everybody. So if there's any lawyer out there and any couple, we should get together and collaborate and try to force Nebraska to at least have the appearance of being civilized. A society that has evolved beyond the dark ages, the middle ages, and the period of the Inquisition and the burning of so-called witches. You were my sounding board, but if you are that lawyer, just say aye, aye. Uh, Senator Chambers, fortunately, you're also going to be hearing today from Susan Koenig, who's an attorney and a friend of mine, who practices in, in marriage and divorce law, uh, among other areas. And so I'm sure she'll have some very interesting comments along those lines for you. So you're the middle-sized Billy Goat Ruffin. Exactly. Ah! Wait for my yeah, sister. Okay. Yeah, for the next. Yeah. Uh, All right. Senator Ashford. Yes, yes, Senator Christensen. Thank you, Chairman. Not necessarily a question to you, sure. but Senator Chambers has made some statements, and he said he'd be willing to listen. I guess I'm going to state a little bit the opposite. The United States is a republic. It is by the people and for the people. And so it's a people's choice, and that's why we have the states with the rights to choose. And the feds have clearly said that. But the other point I want to bring out is Senator Chambers talked about bad genetics. And I guess I don't believe it's in genetics or we wouldn't see people that are were heterosexual become homosexual and those that were homosexual become heterosexual. We have seen switches both ways. So if it's bad genetics, then it would people wouldn't be flipping and going both ways. So I just wanted to state the other side of that that Senator Chambers brought up and go from there. Thank you. Senator Chambers? There is no scientific evidence that people flip and become homosexual who are not. Or if they are homosexual, they cease to be. They might change their conduct because they know how hateful people are and put on the appearance of being what is called, called straight. But here's what I'm getting to. Senator, my colleague, to my left, <laughs> pointed out that in his view, this is a republic and the people have a right to choose. If he would read the Winston case, the court talked about the power <coughs> and the authority of the state based on history and tradition to have almost, almost exclusive jurisdiction over marriage and domestic relations. Those are not federal issues. Then they add, the states may, then they put the important language, subject to these requirements. And the requirements relate to the Constitution the state of Mississippi said, as did the state of Nebraska, that a black person couldn't marry a white person or a white person marry a black person and they were heterosexual. And the state said that, but there was a court that said, but the, but the Constitution 
says no. And it just happens that the two people, the, the name was Loving, so it was kind of appropriate. And it happened to be a white man who wanted to be married to a black woman. And one thing, my colleague, Senator Christensen, that George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Patrick Henry, and all of the rest of them had in common with me. We all love black women. <laughs> and Thomas Jefferson, it's anecdotal. Just like George Washington supposedly threw a silver dollar across the Potomac or cut down the cherry tree and never told a lie, and that's the biggest lie ever told. Thomas Jefferson, he did have children with a teenage girl, which would be statutory rape now, and that's what happened to the women who were among my forebears. Ms. Jefferson said, Thomas, leave those black women alone. And he said, Ms. Jefferson, I'll leave you alone first. And when this guy de Tocqueville came here and praised America so much, he said he went to various plantations and he saw these little children running around, black children and white children. And the only difference was in their complexion. Otherwise, they looked exactly the same. It's like children toasted to a greater degree than others, but they all came from the same loaf. So white men's religion did not prevent them from mixing their blood with ours. I should be the color closer to the color of this microphone than I am to the color that I am. And I didn't get this color from black people jumping over fences, going to bed with white women, but black white men laying their white women aside and jumping over a fence and coming down to the slave huts and impregnating black women. <coughs> and he wants to say, liberty and justice for all. When that song was written, we were enslaved. When the man said our flag was still there, it was not my flag. It's the home of the tree and the land of the slave for us. And because so many bad things have happened to us that I don't want anybody to experience the feelings and the thoughts that I've had and that I continue to have. So any person a group that I see set upon and mistreated because of what they are. I have an obligation to do something about it. When I was younger, I was in a holiness church called Fundamentalist. And as I grew up, there were bad names for people who were homosexual. Many of them started with F. Faggot, fruit, funny, fairy, and growing up in an environment, I didn't ever refer to anybody by those things, but it was a part of what was in my mind. And I thought of homosexuals as evil people. As bad as what I think of Catholic priests now, who assault little children, and bishops and even popes who cover for them, evil. But as I began to understand what was happening to people, because they were homosexual, I didn't even have to go through all this stuff of religion or anything else. When I saw people demeaned, I saw them attacked physically and killed. It changed my conduct. And whereas I had never mistreated anybody who was supposed to be of that orientation, I never did anything to help anybody. I never told people, leave that person alone. Because frankly, I'd never seen anybody when I was growing up who could be called homosexual. Tim Hall was the first senator because of a constituent in his South Omaha district asked him to bring a bill prohibiting discrimination based on sexual orientation and employment. And I told him, Tim, as hateful as these people are, 
no person should stand alone on an issue like that, so I'll co-sponsor it with you. And then I took it over. And one of the points that I made to my Catholic friend, I do have some friends who are Catholic. It's a good thing that the Catholic Pope and the hierarchy we're not as hateful as people in the Catholic Church now who want to maintain and retain the right to discriminate against people because of their sexual orientation. Because had the church been as backward as that, you wouldn't have the Sistine Chapel. Because Michelangelo, a homosexual, was not so hell-bound and evil that the Pope said, we cannot hire you to decorate this ceiling. We want you to paint the creation. We want you to depict the fall. That picture of that finger coming out of heaven touching that finger on the earth. We want you to depict the last judgment. We want you to depict the redemption. You, we know you're homosexual, but we, we got a little sugar in our fridges sometimes also. We understand things like that. And if people would read history and come to an understanding of the way things are, they wouldn't say throughout history, homosexuality has always been condemned. It has been throughout all societies. Lord Byron, when they went to Eton, and some of these exclusive English universities that produced the great literary people, homosexuality was practiced. Among the SS, whose symbol was the death head, homosexuality was rife. The Waffen SS of the Nazi regime. So if people just came to an understanding, they would not misrepresent what has actually happened. They would leave other people alone. And I'm glad that people who have the attitude and mind set that Senator Christensen has will express it so that people can hear it and see what people actually think. We were having a discussion about a bill of Senator Christensen and I wanted to offer an amendment to it. And Senator Christensen had pointed out that he had a neighbor who is homosexual, and he, he talked to him. And you know what somebody who was of that orientation told me? Maybe the people in his district didn't know, and Senator Christensen was bringing that person out of the closet. Maybe they did know. But the fact that this kind of dread can automatically surface shows that throughout this society it is known how much hatred there is toward people who are even thought to be homosexual in orientation. They can be brutalized, as was the man in the old market in Omaha, Nebraska, a short time ago. And I will say what I've got to say in these settings because this is where these issues should be resolved. I don't go to people's churches and express my view. I don't go to their temples and express my views. I don't go to their mosques and express my views. I don't go to their synagogues and express my views. I deal with legislation and not salvation. Since they deal with salvation, they should not try to put religion in politics. If we kick religion, totally out of politics. Religion is not her. Don't let them pray in the legislature. Don't let them pray in a town council or anywhere else. And nothing is hurt in religion. They can still go to all their churches, believe what they want to, say what they please. But when they bring that into the political realm, not only do they contaminate it, but it shows a great disrespect for other people. And if this is the land of the free and everybody is to be embraced, then simply because a group constitutes a numerical majority doesn't mean they have the right to impose their will on others, no matter how hateful, 
no matter how disrespectful, no matter how disregardful it is. That happens in this state and it happens in the legislature. But I'm going to stand against it and speak against it. And when we have a setting like this and people come here, they're going to hear what I have to say or they can walk out. They don't have to stay in here and I won't be offended. But at any rate, what we have going on here today is the presentation of concrete harms that befall people because of a constitutional amendment such as Nebraska has. And what these ignorant people in Nebraska have not caught on to yet is that the ones who put Nebraska into a backward situation find the state so backward that they leave. The ones who did it left here because the state is so backward. The one who got them to adopt term limits has left here. They gutted their legislature. They put into the Constitution a discriminatory, demeaning provision. Then they left. So the harm that people do will live long after they are gone. I'm going to try to stop it. And I will also mention that in disregard of what this Constitution of Nebraska says, I'm going to offer a bill this coming session to legalize same-sex marriage. And when my religious friends tell me, they want to instruct me that God put marriage in place and God decreed that marriage should be between one man and one woman. I'll ask them, what about the Old Testament patriarchs? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who had multiple wives and mistresses. How about Kings Solomon and David? David, whom God referred to through his scriptures as the apple of his eye, had many wives, many concubines. So they lie on God when they say, God said one man and one woman. Even in the New Testament where they love St. Paul, and this my Catholic friends ought to pay attention to, he said a bishop should be the Whose husband are we of one here today? wife. Yeah. Yeah. The bishop should be the husband of one wife. Senator Chambers, hold on a second. Senator Chambers, ma'am, would you, here, here's the deal. The members of the legislature have an opportunity to say whatever they want to say on the floor and in the hearing. That's the way we do business here. I, I would ask you to sit down. Is the purpose I would ask to gather you to, testimony, though? The purpose from is, the public? The from we're, the going members? To gather, we're going to gather testimony from the public, and we're going to gather testimony from others who are here, to, who are professionals, <laughs> to talk about the issue. So I don't want anybody, any outbursts, and I would ask you to please sit down. Will, will I have a chance to testify then? Yeah, yeah. just pl we're going to go through the process that I, I so can. Senator Chambers has the, has the floor, and as long as Senator Chambers wants the floor, Senator Chambers will have the floor. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I know you're not, and I'm just trying to ask, the, I'm asking people here, that's the way we do business here. We have a public hearings on every bill. We have public hearings throughout the interim. And we, the members of the 49 members of this legislature, Senator Christensen, myself, Senator Koash, everybody in this room, we have, if we want to give an hour long speech, we can give it. And, and, and that's the way we do business here. And I appreciate the fact that you're here and we'll go on from there. But I don't want any, anybody, any outbursts or, or other discussion. And the senators are free to counteract anything that I say. And I intend to listen to everybody who's here today and will speak. But Paul said a bishop should be the husband of one wife, which implies that some had more than one wife. So before they start quoting the Bible to me to justify harm to other people, they're going to eat the whole roll. And I've been in this legislature for decades and I've sat through people coming up here and testifying and referring to homosexual people in terms of bestiality, that they probably have sex with animals, they probably have sex with their children. This is the kind of stuff that comes from the audience and I listen to it. And I have never shouted anybody down. As people have come here 
and tried to shout knee down. Now if we are what people claim that America is, then no matter how much we may dislike what somebody is saying, they can walk out. I've already said that. There is nobody at that door who would prevent anybody from leaving. And when people are testifying and saying hateful things, I don't get up and walk out. I'm here to listen to what they say. But what they don't realize, I remember what they say. And I bring it up at times like this and throw back to them what they have said. Now, if I was speaking for the church, if I was condemning homosexuality, if I was talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, there'd be people out there muttering, amen, amen, because it's what they want to hear. They need to be exposed to what somebody like me will say. And when they come where I'm present, that's what they're going to hear. Whether we're talking about gun legislation, where they fill up, the room with people who love the guns and they will shout out also because they don't like what I say. They think that I'm a shrinking violent, that I'll cut and run. But we use words here and we try to put things into the record so that the public will have an understanding of the developmental discussion that leads to legislation that we offer. It also provides for the court what's known as a legislative history to explain why what was done was done. And in the Windsor decision, the US Supreme Court said that Congress was very clear and straightforward in declaring why they want to change this definition. And what they did with DOMA was to take this Dictionary Act and, as you pointed out, change the definition of spouse. And by so doing, they altered and determined how over 1,000 federal laws should be interpreted. And the entire realm or universe of rules, regulations, and interpretations that existed for the purpose of demeaning people who are of the same sex and want to marry. For the purpose of discouraging states from allowing same-sex marriage. For the purpose of telling states do not recognize a same-sex marriage that was legal in another state. That's what Congress made clear. And that's what the U.S. Supreme Court brought out in its decision. And it's why people ought to read these opinions written by the court and not just what talking heads said or newspapers. I read and I pay attention. Even though these laws are not fair to us, I feel the best chance for people situated in a vulnerable position is to know what the law says and sometimes the very language of the law designed to hurt us can contain our salvation if we rightly divide it and present it. And that's one of the reasons, when the lady stood up, that I said what I said at the beginning. For the people favor same-sex marriage or oppose it, they should feel free to express those views. But like they were taught in grade school, wait till your turn comes. As they're taught in Sunday school, wait till your turn comes. But they who are so religious, so more want to be able to kick the rules aside that they don't like and say our rules are what ought to be imposed and we want to impose them and if we don't have the votes to get you out of the legislature and keep you out of the legislature we'll shout you down at the hearings not so those kinds of things those kind of outbreaks have as much impact on me as the sweat of a gnat has on the rock of Gibraltar. And sometimes people can provoke me to say more than what I intended to say. But I will have my say. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Uh, Susan, well, wait a second. Um, Dave Brown has to leave, so Dave can 
Then Susan after that. Dave Brown left. I don't know. <coughs> oh, there's Dave. Thank you. Thanks.